and gentlemen, I want to remind us once again that this is Elevate 3.0. Coming up next, Bishop Faith Emmanuel Benson Idaosa II, popularly known as Bishop Feb, is a prominent man of God, a bishop with the Church of God Mission International, president of Benson Idaosa University, and the son of the Archbishop Margaret Benson Idaosa, with the statement, Amen is not a plan at the Elevate One. He is a master of his words and phrases. Being a seasoned teacher, preacher, and entrepreneur, he is driven by a need to build the youth to an amazing leader who loves God and can change their generation. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, with a loud ovation, smiles on your faces. Can we be upstanding if possible as we welcome Bishop Feb Idaosa. Come on, put your hands together. Yes, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. So good to see you this morning. Thank you for being here. Please be seated. How much time do I have? Okay, I have two hours, so I'm going to share for the next two and a half hours. No, 30 minutes, please. All right. May I have some volume on the monitors, please? Hallelujah. All right. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Thank you so much for the chance to be here this morning. I want to thank our wonderful host, Reverend Mavi Yisibo. Thank you so much. Can we give her a wonderful hand this morning, please? Uh, I also want to um, say hello to all of our other speakers this morning. I, I'm privileged to share the stage with three wonderful women this morning that are going to share wonderful thoughts for this generation. Um, as the Bible says, blessed art thou amongst women. So I'm, I'm blessed this morning. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much. I uh, also want to say a big thank you to Reverend Isibo, um, a, a, great, a great mentor, a great father figure. Someone who I've, I've loved and appreciated for many, many years. He just turned about 45 years old a few days ago. And um, he's <laughs> no, anyway. All right, good morning. Thank you so much for the chance to share. I, I want to share this morning um, on the topic mindset reset. We're, we're here talking about mindset reset. And this is a, it's an awesome, awesome chance to speak and to share. And I want to be able to inspire you this morning, not just to motivate you, but I want you to think about a few things, get some thoughts in your mind. And as we think through them, we'll be able to come out of here. Now, my topic is called creating your future. So I want to share about how to create your future and what will help you. So if you can have the slides on the screen, please, I, I, that would, I would appreciate that. I want to talk to you about what I call finding your problem. Finding your problem. All right? So what I'm talking about this morning is called finding your problem. And it's what I believe, I call it the secret formula to creating your future. Now, if, you, um, if you're here, what I'm going to do, I have all of these slides. They're here. You can get them free of charge. If you want, you can go to my Instagram page, and I can send you a free copy of the slides. I've also put them into an e-book, so you can get it as an e-book, which you'll get free of charge. So please, 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 whatever you do. Oh, thank you. Just can clap, clap. Thank you. Thank you for clapping. But please, whatever you do this morning, please don't sit there trying to copy everything down on the screen. Uh, so what I try to do, I try to make sure that I put the slides um, very, very short, so that we don't have to spend all the time copying. But if I can have it on the screen, that would help a lot. Um, the, the, first, the first topic is called finding your problem, the secret formula for creating your future. So my topic is how do you create your future? How do you create a future you want? How do you create a future that's going to be one that you love and appreciate? And I have, just, I have one, answer that's for, one answer for this problem, okay? It's called finding your problem. How do you find your problem? So let me ask you the first question. My question to begin with for you today is this. Ask someone next to you, what is your problem? What is your problem? Okay? Now, it sounds somehow, but I'm, I'm going somewhere. You, you'll, you'll, you'll find out where I'm going, okay? The question is, what is your problem? Because the truth is, if you are going to create a future, you have to be able to solve a problem. And so, Let's go to the first slide. First slide, I'm talking about every generation. Now, every generation chases money. They chase success. Every generation from 
Are we taking pictures of the slides or of me? Which one are you taking pictures of? So I should pose well. Got it? Take it down. Got it? All right. Thank you. Okay. I oh, should I made this brighter. Can you, can you make it brighter so you can see what's behind it? Okay, so every generation chases money. That's, that's from the baby boomers, all the old people, down to the young ones, to generation Y, generation X, millennials, to generation Z, and even now what they call generation alpha. Generation alpha is those who were born from the 2010s to 2020s. That's, that's the, as long as 11. Everyone's been thinking, okay, if I can just make money, I'll be successful. That's what they think. But the truth is, that's not the answer because we're thinking that money will solve my problem and success will, be able to, will make me have a great future. But I want to tell you the secret that will help you have a great future, okay? The first thing you must think about when you think about your future is this. Number one, next slide, please. Don't chase money, okay? Stop chasing money. Stop chasing money. Stop chasing trends. Stop running after today's definition of what's the in, the in thing. Because whatever the in thing is today is what we do. We pursue what is in, what's making money. If you are from Benin, you know that anything, when I'm, anybody in Benin knows that. Whatever is working today, by tomorrow, everybody follows it. Okay, so we're doing pure water. Tomorrow, we're all doing pure water. There are over 150 hotels in Benin City. And each one is full. So they're making more hotels all the time. But my point is this. We tend to chase whatever is the new thing. But the truth is, you should not be chasing the new thing or the in thing or the trends. What are the trends? Because this is, what's, this is what's working right now. Well, tomorrow trends will shift. Here is what you must do, okay? Instead of chasing the new thing that's running, like this dog, the dog will always chase a ball. What happens when, when it gets the ball, the owner will come, will take the ball, and will throw it again. So the dog is forever chasing what it cannot get. I don't want you to be like that. I want you to start thinking, if I want to create my future, if I want to have a mindset reset, if I want to be different, I need to do something else. Okay, next slide. What you must chase instead is you must pursue your purpose. Okay, so pursue your purpose. What is your purpose? Purpose is what you are or who you are, not what you do. So I love what I heard this morning from um, Reverend Seaborn. She said, said, you must see differently. So you can't behave like everybody else and expect to get different results. You cannot see things that everybody has seen and, and, and want to act the way they're acting and expect to be different. You must begin to see things differently. She said, you must see differently in order to create the future that you want to create. And for you, to, for you to see differently, I want you to start thinking about your purpose. Why do I exist? What am I doing here? What am I doing? What is my reason for existing? What is my raison d'etre, as they say in French? What's my reason for being? What is my purpose? Why do I exist? Now, if you can find out what your purpose is, I promise you, the closer you get to your purpose, the faster and easier you get to creating that future. Okay, here's what happened. We're talking, since I'm a pastor, I can say Jesus Christ, am I? And we're in a church. Thank you. Okay. So Jesus Christ, when he came to the earth and he started his ministry, as soon as he was baptized, the first thing he did, he went to the temple and he said, this is my manifesto. This is who I am. This is what I'm doing. Okay. And he said, he began to declare what he would do. And I'm here to heal the brokenhearted. I'm here to, to set captives free. I'm going to do all this. This is who I am. And so when he said, this is who I am, by quoting the book of Isaiah, after that, the next thing he did, he began to go into the, into the world, he began healing people, he began doing all these different things. But all of those things were as a result of knowing who he was. Thankfully, as he was baptized, the Holy Ghost came from heaven and said, this is my son, in whom I am well pleased. Okay? I don't want to preach, let me just go back to what I'm talking about. Okay? All right. So, but he, he came out and declared, this is my purpose, this is, what, this is why I'm here. And so he began to do things that flowed with his purpose who he was. Am I making sense to you? So everything he, did after, after, everything he did after the temple went back to his purpose. Okay. That's how I want you to think this morning. Think about your purpose. Why do you exist? Now, if you don't know what your purpose is, come to church. They will tell you about that, how to find your purpose. That's our theme for the year. Reverend Mavi will do a very good job about that. But you must begin to understand that purpose is who you are, 
not what you do. Now, let me explain this. We keep thinking what I'm going to do, I want to pursue money. I want to be the next um, Jeff Bezos. I want to be the next Elon Musk. I want to be the next Paystack. I want to be the next unicorn company. And so we're thinking, I want to do these things. But stop thinking about those things first, please. Are you with me? Think about who am I? What is my purpose? Why do I exist? If you can think about that, then the next step will become very, very easy. Follow me for a minute. Let's go to the next slide, please. Have you defined who you are and why you are? Who am I? What is my purpose? Why am I here? If you define that, once you do that, you will see how things begin to flow, okay? So define who you are, define why you are, and then the rest will flow. I will, it will make sense to you in a minute. If you go to the next slide, we'll talk about these things here. These are a pair of glasses, okay? Now, the purpose of these glasses is what? To help someone see. Someone who has issues with their eyes or with their vision, either I can't see very far or I can't see very close. So the glasses are defined by what they do, but really what they are. Am I making sense? It's not really defined by the brand. Not defined by, okay, well, it's, these are Gucci glasses or these are um, whatever name you want to call it, glasses. It's defined by what it does. And so, sorry, what it is, all right? So then what it does then is a secondary thing to what it is. And once you understand what it is and what its purpose is then, anybody who needs that solution can find it. I'm, following, I'm coming somewhere. I want you to please follow me to know where we're going. Okay, the next one. These are, these are this is a phone. And a phone's primary purpose is to help me communicate. Everything else that we add on top of it, from your calculator to your Snapchat and different things you do, etc., cetera, are all add-ons, but the purpose for that phone is to help you communicate. So you can strip everything away from that phone, remove all those different things, and at its basic level, because it understands what it is, then everything else will flow along on top of that. Hope, hope you're following where I'm going now. If you're seeing where I'm going with that. You must understand what you are, first of all, why you are. A pen is here, and the reason why it exists is to help me take my ideas and my thoughts and put them down on paper. So it doesn't really matter if the pen has a big name on it and costs me 10 naira like a big will cost me. The big is 10 naira, right? Or 50 naira now? Okay. Or if it costs me $100 because it has a very big name on it. At the basic level, the pen that costs $1,000 and the pen that cost 10 naira will do the what? Exact same thing. So then I, will, I, I wouldn't be pursuing the one that cost the most. If I want, all I want to do is just sign my name on a check. I will find whatever is the easiest one. I will not say, please give me that one. It's very expensive. Are you following me? Okay, because at its basic level, it understands its purpose. A screwdriver, last thing I will talk about is a screwdriver. The purpose of a screwdriver is to find a screw anywhere, either... Unscrew or either tighten, either tighten or loosen. That's what it is. So wherever it finds a screw that it works, that's, that's loose or that's tight, it simply knows that it has to either tighten or loosen. It understands its purpose. And so it doesn't struggle with who I am, what am I doing, because I know my purpose. Wherever I am, I simply understand. Now, if you can begin to understand these things about the things in the world around us, I want you to think about yourself in the same way, because today we are going to elevate our mindsets. We're going to reset how we think and begin to flow with there. Let's go to the next slide, please. My next slide now talks about this. This here says, pursue a problem that you are gifted to solve. Now, I've asked you a question, first of all, about who are you? What is your purpose? Next question becomes, what is your gift? Now, I want you to think about this thing because if you can think about who I am and understand that I am this or I am that, my purpose is this. Think along those lines, okay? So am I a solution provider? Am I someone that, that is here to solve problems? My purpose, I believe, is to help change Nigeria. Now, Nigeria, you know, needs, hallelujah, let's move on. No, I'm just joking. So that's the reason why, <laughs> like Indy D, and like many of us here, I cannot leave this country. Now, I can travel and come back, but this is where I believe my purpose is. 
So that ties me to the things I will do. Yeah, we'll connect all of these things in a minute. All right, here we go. So my question for you is this. Do you know who you are, what your purpose is? If you understand what your purpose is, then you begin to find out that your purpose is tied to a gift. You have a gift. You have a skill. You have something which most people don't have. If you know what that is, I want you to begin to think then that you are gifted to solve a problem. You are not just gifted because God had extra gifts in heaven. You don't know what to do. He gave you your gift for a reason. And same way that my gift and your gift are not the same thing. You have a skill that is special to you. That is the reason why God gave it to you, and there's something that you're going to do with it, okay? So now, do you know what this is here? This here is called a Rubik's Cube. You've seen it before, right? Some of you have seen this before if you're young enough or old enough. Okay, a Rubik's Cube is something that's easy for many people to solve. It's, it has all these colors here, and if you twist it around different places at different times, you get all the colors on the same side to look the same way. Now, I have no skill in solving this problem, okay? But some people do. Some people can take this, they can take this Rubik's Cube, within five minutes, solve the whole thing. All the reds are on the same side, yellow on the same side, green on the same side. I could not do that. I've tried. I tried many times, and I eventually had to resort to one day I was frustrated. I won't say I cheated because Indy said we shouldn't cheat, so I won't cheat. I was frustrated, so I took, I just peeled off the stickers. I took all the yellow, peeled them off, all the green peeled them off. I put all the yellow on the same side, green on the same side, blue on the same side. Then I now glued it together so nobody can move it again. <laughs> I've solved the problem. <laughs> but it is not my skill set, so I could not use my skill to solve it. I eventually had to use, <laughs> I was frustrated I did it that way. But my point that I'm trying to make is this. Everybody has different skills. Okay, so think this morning. I've asked you some questions. What is your purpose? What skill do you have? What gift do you have? Okay, next slide, please. Do you have a skill? Do you have a strength? The man who's making this pottery here has a skill. He has a strength, which I don't have. But the point is that you have a gifting. Can I ask you to think about your gifting this morning? What is your gift? Can you think about your gift? Do you have it in your mind? Okay, one is there. Anybody else? What, does, anybody else have, does anybody else here have a gift? Two. Okay, three skills, four skills, five. Can I, I want to see your hands because everyone here has a skill that's different. Okay, good. Online, you're watching online as well too. Do you have a skill? Okay, if you are thinking about your skill. Now, I've asked you about your purpose. Think about your purpose. So put that on the right side. Your gift, left side. Your skill, put it somewhere. Okay, next slide. My question is this. What is something you do very well? that you do so well that people can call you because they know if they have this problem, they should call you, okay? Do you have that thing? That when someone says, okay, look, this person is depressed, please, oh, call John. John knows how to get them out of depression. Or this person has a tie that's very bad, his, his tire is bad, call this person. Or your phone has an issue. Oh, I know the call. Do you know what I'm talking about? Okay, so what's your skill? What's your strength? What's your thing that you do very well that people will look for you and ask for you by name? Um, that process is called owning a problem. Okay, so um, Mr. Nusahi knows how to fix satellites. So anybody has an issue with the satellite or his TV, whatever they call him, what's your skill that will call you? Can you own the solution to a problem based on the skill you have. Am I, am, I, am, I, am I communicating? Okay, so we've been thinking about different things. We've been thinking about the things we have. We have skills. We have strengths. Then there's a problem somewhere that you can solve with your skill. Let's, let's go to the next slide, please, if you can. Okay, so this right here says, connect your purpose, connect your skill with a solution. So what we have here is an umbrella. The umbrella has a purpose. What's the purpose of the umbrella? To shade, to cover, to keep you dry, or to keep you not so hot at different times. Okay, so that is a solution that 
If I walk out of here this moment right now and I see it's raining, the first thing I will reach for is what? An umbrella. If you can't find an umbrella, you will find a newspaper or a pen or something, not a pen, a book or something, and use to cover your attachment, sorry, your, your hair. I didn't say anything like, I didn't say that because nobody heard me say that. You will try to cover something, okay? But the truth is, the best solution, what owns the solution to that problem of rain and your hair is what? The umbrella owns the solution. Am I making sense? Okay, so now I want you to start thinking. You have a skill. You have a gift. Start thinking, I need my skill. I need my purpose to connect to a solution. So much so that every time that problem comes up, people think about me. When they think about you, you then begin to own that solution. All right, so let's talk about how this works. Let's go to the next slide, please. The next slide says this, that every problem demands a solution. Not just ask for a solution. Every problem does what? It demands for a solution. So, for example, if I'm walking out of this room right now and I have a pebble in my shoe, what do I do? Will I just say, oh, well, I'll manage it. No, it's a problem. What will I do? I will stop and take off my shoe, remove the stone, because it's a problem. And that problem right now is demanding. It's not asking. It's not begging. It's demanding for a solution. Please follow me. I put some thoughts into your head so far. Okay? Every solution is tied to what? A reward. Okay? So if I take my shoe off, remove the stone, I get a reward. My foot tells me thank you. I feel better. Okay? So think about these things. Every problem in life demands a solution. And I've just asked you right now, do you have a solution? Do you have a skill? Do you have a strength? Because if you can tie your strength to a solution and you realize that every solution is tied to a reward, then you can understand that that reward is going to come and be a blessing to you at some point. Am I making sense to somebody? All right, next slide. People will pay you money for two things. Number one, what you know. Number two, what you do. Okay? That's all they will pay for. They don't pay you money because you are handsome like Venisibo. You are handsome. No problem. They don't pay you money for that. Why? You're handsome. You're, yes, your handsomeness is nice, but I won't pay because you are handsome. If your handsomeness can help me solve a problem, I'll pay you for that. Okay? All right, so they'll pay for what you know or what you do. So what do you know in terms of your skill? What do you do with your skill? What do you know that I don't know? Because if I don't know the answer, I will ask you, please tell me the answer. It's like the old joke they said that a plumber, or a, um, a plumber can come to your house and bang some pipes and charge you 1,000 naira or 5,000 naira or 10,000 naira. Say, ah, 1,000 naira just for banging a pipe? He said, no, 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 no. It's, it's to bang a pipe is like 10 naira. To know which pipe to bang is the real money. Are you following where I'm going? Or to hit a computer here. Yeah, that's 5K. But to know which part to hit. So are you following where I'm going? So my knowledge has to be tied to a solution. My skill has to be tied to something which I know that you don't know. So start thinking right now. I've given you many thoughts many ideas, and they're rolling around in your head. I'll bring them all together in a minute. But start thinking. These things are going to help you in the future with what you know, what you do, and they will help you create that future. Okay, next slide. The question is this now. What are you doing with the knowledge you have? We read books. We have knowledge, and it just sits there. If you don't do something with your knowledge, it will not help you create your future. If you don't do something with what you know, all of these things we're talking about, you must do something with it. We heard Indidi just now, she talked about agriculture and the things that she's doing. Her knowledge is not just sitting there. Her knowledge is now helping to create better agriculture. It's creating spices that we know are genuine. Now I'm only going to go and look for her spice. I will not buy another spice than Nigerian spice anymore. 
I know none of you will do that because now you know something that no one knows. But she has some knowledge and she has done something with it. What she has done with that knowledge now is what we are going to pay her money for. Am I making sense to you? Okay, I'm, I hope so because you need to start asking yourself, what are you doing with the knowledge that you have? Next slide, please. Thank you. So rewards, I told you, are tied to solutions. Go back. Yes, rewards are always tied to solutions. And rewards come in two ways. The most popular ones are either verbal, verbal, verbal rewards or financial rewards. I told you just now that when you take your shoe off, your foot says thank you. If I help you solve a problem, you will tell me thank you. But if I help you solve a big enough problem, you will say, ah, here's some money for it. Okay? So that's why when we help people solve problems, they say thank you. Or you want to get something solved, you pay someone to help you solve it. You call the plumber to help you, pay, to help you fix that thing. It's a reward for his skill. It's a reward for his knowledge. And so you pay him money for that. What you have right now in this generation is we have people that have different skills. And I'll come back in the end if I have time to do a few case studies and ask you some questions and we can think about how to tie them together. Okay, so rewards in many ways. Rewards always follow solutions. So if you have a solution, a reward will pursue you. What I have in the picture there is someone here holding out a jar of money saying, take my money. All right, how do I know this? If you've ever had a pest problem in your house, you have rats in your house, don't raise your hand if you do, but if you've ever, ever had a problem in your house where you have, you have pests, you see a little rat running in your house. Now, yesterday on the streets, you saw this guy with a red cardboard, red cardboard paper, right? Saw him, I want to have, it has glue on it. And it closes up, in, and how much is the glue thing? 200 naira, correct, or whatever it is it costs. You saw him yesterday, and you passed him, no wahala. Didn't even care. Tonight, you see a rat in your house. Tomorrow morning, what will you do tomorrow morning? You will pursue that guy with money. I have money, please. Take my money. I'm begging you. Take my money. Give me that solution. Yes? Okay, so think about this now. You have to be that person that has a solution that you own. That cardboard, red cardboard paper owns, in my mind, the solution for the rat. So I'm thinking now, I've got to find that person who owns that thing. I want you to think about yourself. There must be a problem that you can own which people will come and chase you down for. May that be your portion this year in Jesus' name. Amen. And we all said amen. Now, remember I told you last year, amen is not a plan. So say the amen. Now make a plan from the amen. Okay? So make a plan from your amen. I've given you some thoughts right now. Some thoughts, some ideas, some, some solutions. You have problems. You see rewards always follow problems. Now let's come to this thing. I told you, think about your solution. Next slide, please. We're going to bring the tie all these together right now. Don't say amen. Tie your amen to a plan. Okay? Now, let's think outside the box. I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you a few pictures. I'm going to ask you some questions. What problems do these companies own in our minds? Okay? Next slide. First one. This company right here. You know the company? What problem does it own in your mind? Search engine. So if I tell you something, I'm looking for this. Um, a, few, a few weeks ago, um, I was in a Zoom meeting with some, some big wigs, and the question came up, how many wards are there in the Dole States? Nobody knew the answer. I quietly pulled my phone out of my thing, because no, we're in Zoom, so I was here. Looking at that, I pulled my phone out and just typed into this search engine, how many wards are in the Dole States? 194. So I said, you know, uh, I think... It's around 200, probably less. I'm guessing 194. Was I actually guessing? No, I, I already checked the answer. I just said, ah, they said, wow, Bishop, whoa, wow, that's wonderful. And they gave me a reward. They praised me. And my head just swole. That's a reward. Okay, I gave a solution. But guess what? This company gave me a solution. This company owns that problem in my mindset, in my mind. They own that problem. Say, so if I have a question, I just do what? Search, okay? Their name is now actually a verb. If you have a question, what do you do? You Google it. It's a verb. Now, Google is actually not a verb. The word Google is actually a number. It means a number that has, I think, nine or 20 zeros. How many zeros? It's a very, very large number. But they made it their own. They now own it. 
So if you, have, if you have a question, you just Google it. Next slide, please. This company is called Amazon, and they own what problem? Selling of goods, right. They, as a matter of fact, they said that they want to own and sell you everything from A to Z. So if you go to Amazon, you can find anything online. Now, during the pandemic, they were so popular because people, people couldn't go outside. They started buying things, and their value skyrocketed. They owned the problem, saying, you know, I can't go outside anymore right now. I need to buy something. What do I need to do? Oh, very simple. I'll just go to Amazon. Okay? Are you following where I'm going this morning? They own a problem. They own a solution to a problem. Next slide, please. This company is called, you know this company? How many of you have a subscription to this company? How many of you have a subscription? Hi, right, all of you do. Okay. <laughs> all right, so last year again, during the pandemic, what happened? We were at home, so we all paid for... Right, and so what happens then? You pay them 10 bucks a month, and imagine thinking now, how many Nigerians are paying $10 a month? Add all together. They own... They owned the solution to we can't go out anymore, so let's just stay home and watch movies. They owned that solution. You were bored, so they owned the solution to boredom. Are you following where I'm going? Yes. Thank you, that was very good. They, they owned the solution to boredom. Thank you. Next slide, please. This company is what? Okay, what problem did they solve and what do they own? Meetings, connections, etc. Many of us had never heard of Zoom before. 2020. Now, because me, I've been there for years. You know, I'm a technology guy. <laughs> no, but I'm... Okay, but I, I used to use a company called Skype. You heard of Skype before, right? Skype still exists, but this company owned the solution and they stole it from Skype. Skype is now trying to come back. It's not possible, okay? Now, I think about another one. There's another one called YouTube. You know YouTube, right? If I hear a song today and I want to find... So I want to see, oh, what song is that? What do you do? You go to YouTube and you find, type the name of the song... YouTube, YouTube is actually the world's second largest search engine. Now, here's where I'm going. You go to YouTube and you put it in there. Now, a couple of years ago, a company came out and said they want to create a place for Nigerian music videos. Not a bad idea. However, YouTube already exists. They said, oh, don't worry about it. We are going to be the Nigerian YouTube. And they said, okay, why do you want to be the Nigerian YouTube? Because YouTube is in Nigeria. Are you following where I'm going? So they have owned that solution so well that nobody can come in and steal that title from them until you have a great idea. Okay, my time is going. Let me move on to the next one quickly. Hope you guys are still with me. Am I, am I okay? Yes. All right, I've used a few minutes so far. This company is called Tesla, and they own the solution to fossil fuels. People are now buying all these cars. Now, here's, what, here's the thing about this company I like a lot. They, they created a, a very, very expensive car over $100,000, and they said, okay, we're going to make it electric, and it works very well, very fast, it's beautiful, it's nice. And then they said, okay, from the, profit, from the profits we'll make from this first car, we'll make another set of cars that cost $50,000. From, 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 from what we make from that car, the profits there, make second set that'll cost $35,000. So everyone now is not buying all these cars. They are owning this solution. Now, here's the thing. Nigeria still is pushing oil. Oil, oil, oil. Oil, O-Y-E-L, oil. <laughs> oil. But electric cars are coming and taking over. So if we're not thinking about the future, we're trying to hold on to the past. Are you following me, please? Okay, now this guy owns it so well that during the pandemic, his value went up from a few billion dollars to the world's richest man. So now he and that other guy are fighting for the top spot. Next slide, let me, let me move on quickly. What about this cross here? What does this own? Salvation. Salvation. It solves the sin problem. So whenever someone's in sin, we bring them this solution. Am I communicating to you? Okay, next slide. Let me move on because of time. My question for you as we close is this. What problem can you solve and what solution can you own in our minds? You have to start thinking about solutions. You must, you must, you must, you must own a solution. Okay? Please, own a solution. Find an answer. Find out something that you can have that is a solution, which we will begin to pursue you for. Next slide, please. I'll close up in a few, no, close up in a few minutes. Here's what I just talked about. Okay? This ends it up. If you can find a solution to a problem, right? Okay? Problems 
come in clusters. Let me explain because of time quickly. Problems come in clusters. So if on my street, I have no power in my house. That's just if. You know, that's, that's not very likely. There's no, there's no power in my street. You know, this is Nigeria. There's power everywhere, right? Okay. If there's no power in your street, and I go to Evan Chris's house, he has no power. I can solve his problem by giving him what? Either diesel or a generator or solar power, whatever it is. I solve his problem. Guess what? Every problem comes in clusters. There are probably people that he knows on the same street who have the same problem. Are you following where I'm going? Which means if you can solve his problem, he knows somebody that's very close to him that's the same problem. I have solved that person's problem, they know somebody else has the same problem because problems come in clusters. Now, once you can find a solution that you own, tied to your purpose, tied to your answers, tied to what you have, you can begin to be sought after. You can begin to attract wealth to yourself and you can begin to create a future. Am I making sense? I hope you can catch all these things so we can close up. Next slide and we'll, we'll wrap up. What problem is your business solving? What problem are you solving? Next slide. What problem can you solve? What is your purpose? What are you gifted in? Can you tie your purpose or gift to a solution? Why? Because every, so every problem demands a solution. On the street where there's no light, he's demanding for a solution. In a place where there are rats in a house, it is demanding for a solution. So if you can find your purpose, your gift, your skill, and tie it to a solution, somebody will chase you down and give you money for that solution. So stop pursuing money, stop chasing trends, stop chasing wealth, and start chasing your purpose. Start chasing a way to find your skill and make it something that's attractive. Start putting your ideas into books. Start putting your thoughts into places. Um, case studies very quickly, I'm, I'm wrapping up. People online, Nigeria, we, we love to laugh, correct? We like to laugh because there are so many problems. If I don't, <laughs> if I don't laugh today, I will go on whatever. So you have to laugh. So online right now, people are making skits. They're making the big things that are funny. And we are pursuing them, right? We watch them. Now, here's the thing. That in itself is not the answer. But people who want to get the attention of other people are chasing those who can make us laugh. So you would chase a basket mouth because it makes you laugh. You would chase a... Um, What's her name? Toy Bucci, because they make you laugh. You chase them, and so banks now are paying money to these guys to take their story and put it into a skit and make you watch. Am I following you? I'm going? So start thinking, okay, you have a skill. Don't let your skill just die there. Tie it to a solution, because somebody is looking for your answer. David Okun is here. He has, um, he has some books out. I talked to him this morning about some ideas he has. He, has like, he puts out these three things every week. Three simple ideas. Put them into a newsletter, okay? Send them to your friends. People now are looking forward to getting your ideas and your solutions every week. Now, when you have the next point, those guys already know you for having answers, have given you ownership of giving them answers. They'll pursue you. You have a church. If your church is one that gives people answers and solutions, they will pursue you because they have answers. It's not just because you only, you only have, you have a nice light, you have a nice screen. No problem. That's nice. But so does every other church on this street. So if you are giving me something that's a solution and I can tie you to that solution, I will begin to pursue you. Hope this makes sense. Next slide, and we're, we're closing up. Next slide. Finding the problem which you, which you can own is the secret to creating your future. So as I conclude today, my answer is this. If you can find the problem which you can own, that is the secret to creating your future. I want you to start thinking. As we said here, first of all, see differently. If you can see differently, that is the secret to creating your future. See things differently. See things differently. Um, and when you see it, start thinking, start doing. Let your C-do ratio be one-to-one, -one, as Indy said. I love that today. Let your C-do ratio be one-to-one. -one. Last slide, I want to tell you thank you very much. If you want to receive a free ebook version of this presentation, please join my Telegram Mastermind group. The number is there. Join Telegram. Put that number in there. I'll give it to you free of charge. Or go to my Facebook page or go to my um, Instagram page, and you can join and get these things. So in conclusion, as I've closed, this is my last slide. Thank you very much. God bless you. Please, please think. Find a solution.
that you can own. Tie your purpose, tie your skill to solving problems. And I promise you, the world will come to chase you. Okay? Nobody goes to town and say, please, who is the second best doctor here? They want to know who's the best doctor. They want to know who has the solution. Okay? You, you bought Ashwabi for your wedding. No one, do you think, I want to ask me, please, Auntie Mavi, who's the third best teller you know? No, who's the best one you know? Okay? Because he has solved her problem. I'll pursue that person. May God make you the sought after in Jesus' name. May God make you the one that the world begins to search for. May God make you chased after. May God let you take your skill and turn your skill into a solution that will bless the world in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much. Right now, I don't even know what to say, but let's just once again appreciate the bishop for what he has thought of this morning. All right, a whole lot written down, but right now we need to move straight to questions and answers. Hallelujah, okay. So we're going to go straight to questions and answers. We all listen to the bishop, so if you have a question you want to ask, it's still available, so... You can come forward and then put your question through. Yes, thank you. Thank you for that. Please, please go. All right, we have one question, okay? Let me start this off again. It's not time to be shy, please. Let's um, get our questions out there. But I have two questions, sir. Um, I try to, I think both of them are intertwined. First, um, a lot of people are, you know, getting this idea that, you know, it's about entertainment now. You know, all of us should just head in the creative direction because it's, um, it has, it seems to be where everything is happening right now. Um, and, that ties, and that gives me um, a thought on this. A lot of the people who started the big companies that were there, do, do, we, do we assume that those people sat down and said, what do I, what do I know how to do? And um, then they decided that I know how to make cars, for example, and I know how to do this. Or did they search outside themselves? So in, in, in essence, my question is, how much soul searching as against environmental searching should we be doing to find um, the idea that would be ours, as it were? Um, because what some people, I've heard some people say what they are doing now, they probably wouldn't you know, think that that's what they wanted to do with their lives. That's, so where's the place for um, searching that? Um, and secondly, uh, there are some people who have who probably are sitting now and thinking to themselves, the thing I like to do is really very niche. It's, I've, I've probably never seen it done, maybe in Nigeria or in Africa. Um, how do I begin to articulate that and find out if there are people who are willing to pay for that when I probably have not seen it done around, right? How do I begin to build that type of... Um, thing. Okay, great questions. Um, I, was, I wanted to thank um, Reverend Sibo for giving me this. I, I, got, I got a whole set of towels that have my name on them. Very, very nice. <laughs> no, I, I'm saying that because I, I'm asking myself, who made this towel? I want to go and find it so I can, make, so I can get them to make for me too as well. So the person made it very, very well, and it solved the problem for me. All right? So thank you very much. Lovely. I appreciate that. Help me, help me, thank, help me thank her, please. Thank you. If you thank her, maybe she'll give me, tell me the person's name. If thank, thank her well enough. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Okay, so here we go. That was a great question. Excellent question. How much soul searching versus environmental searching should I do? Excellent question. Best one I've I'll, I'll probably add that to my book. Thank you very much. I'll give you credit. Okay. The question is this. Um, when you are trying to solve a problem, when you're trying to create something new, I told you 
if you, I think if you begin to search for environmental things first, it's not a bad idea. It's a mixture of both. But please don't search for money. Whatever you do, don't say, what's making money? Is it entertainment? Is it that? Don't search for that. Search instead for what do I have? What do I know? What can I solve? What can I do? Search for that well. Okay, so Tesla, for example, now he knew that he wanted, he has two things that everyone knows. Everyone knows. He wants to put a man on the moon. He wants to go back to the moon. And, so he wants to go to Mars. Okay, so he's not thinking about it. It's not, so his idea is he wants to go to Mars. He also wants to solve the problem of the world's fossil fuels. Okay, so it's from those ideas that came the answer. Let me create a comp car company. Actually, he didn't actually create it. He actually bought it. He connected to it, right? Okay, but it's from what you know that is your issue that burns you, that, that makes you angry or whatever it is, that makes you happy, that, that makes you joyful. If I know that everyone in Nigeria has to brush their teeth every day, and I like nice teeth, I could have nice teeth, I can begin to think and time my my purpose, my love to the environment. So it's, it's a balance of both. But it has to be balanced with what you know and what skill you have. So I know, for example, that everyone has to take a bath every day. Awesome. I think all of you took a bath this morning. Don't raise your hand if you didn't. No problem. But if you did, and I like people to smell nice, I'm going to think, okay, that's true. I like, can I create something that is, that, you know, I like people that smell nice. I want to make sure that people smell nice, people look nice. Can I begin to find something that, that will connect them to that, crazy, to that part of looking nice and smelling nice? And then knowing that everyone takes a bath every day, I can create a solution that people will use every day. And then, if it works well enough, people will pursue me with their money to give them what I have. So it's a balance of both um, the environmental, but I think very, very strongly soul search. What do I know? What do I do? What do I enjoy? What do I hate? These different things will come together and give you an answer. All right? Thank you very much. Your last question, what was the last question again? Nishin, right. Okay, yeah. So I, and I think that's also very good. Nishin means that can I go um, very, 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 can I drill down to a particular small area? And then you say it hasn't been done before in Nigeria. That's even better. Because if it hasn't been done before, the truth stands that it's been done somewhere. But if it's not been done in your environment, then that means somebody is looking for your solution, okay? So um, my father told us, told us several stories. One story was, he told us one about um, the place, they told, they, they told, someone went to the sun, someone went to the sun one day and said, please, Mr. Sun, there's a place in this world where it is always dark. Can you help us? We need to figure out what it is. And the sun went around looking for that place. He went everywhere, everywhere he went. He could not find a place where it was always dark. Why? Because he was the sun. Everywhere he went, he carried light. I'm making sense? Okay, so start thinking along, those, thinking along those lines. That there's something that you carry. That anywhere you go, somebody is looking for it. They came to find the sun because everywhere he went, he carried light. So there's something that you carry. That everywhere you go, something someone will look for it. So if it hasn't been done yet, and it's not been done here, it's a great opportunity. Please go there. Because whatever you have, somebody is looking for. Okay, so find that answer. There's more, but I, I don't want to take up all your time today. Very much so. Do we have any more questions? Any more questions? All right, thank you. I think that will be all for now.